Suffolk County and New York police say that Richard Casso. Richard Casso. I've encountered many, many evil people in my life. So, remember Ricky Casso? Sure do. A teenager charged in an alleged satanic cult murder of one of his friends, Gary Lowers. They fall in the same category as the guys like Manson. Hello guys and welcome to Geek Legion of Doom where today we're going to talk about a new documentary that's going to be released by Wild Eye Releasing on the 5th of November by the name of The Acid King. This was directed by Dan Jones and Jesse P. Pollock and this covers the 1984 murder of 17 year old Gary Lowers by his friend and someone he knew very well, Ricky Castle, who was also 17 years old. I don't want to go into the whole story with you to spoil anything as I do feel this documentary is really well worth watching. This is a documentary put together by um, obviously narration and a lot of interviews both historical back in 1984 that were taken at the time and now um, people that ha were kids at that time that are now grown that are now similar age to myself and they were all in the sort of like friendship circle and they're looking back and talking about everything that happened that led up to this event we go into the background um, in Ricky Castle's life, why he ended up as he did. I um, made a very, very troubled upbringing. He was thrown out of home at 13 years old to fend for himself on the streets. He spent some time in a psychiatric facility. We do get a lot of ideas from his friends and from interviews, what type of kid he was, things he got into, things he was interested in. Um, when he was actually arrested for the murder of Gary, he was wearing an ACD t-shirt. So that brings on to something else that's heavily concentrated in the documentary, which is the whole era of satanic panic. So if you're not aware what satanic panic is, um, this is an era where a lot of very um, usually religious people and um, parents of children that were into uh, the evils of rock music, they blamed bands like ACDC, Black Sabbath, um, Judas Priest, Metallica, on inciting a evilness in their children, a wish to worship Satan, um, black magic, all this kind of, just all sorts. And there was burning of records, there was cutting of boys' long hair, anything to actually distance themselves from this love of rock and metal music. It was all seen as being evil. It has actually been used in court for um, teens committing suicide, all sorts of really horrible things. Um, which is a video I may want to go on to do myself one day. But this documentary is just concerning the one instance. It does cover the entire background behind that feeling at the time, which I do feel they, they convey very well. Um, and what really brought Ricky to the stage that he actually committed murder to one of his 17 year old friends. The documentary is told in a series of narration and interviews with people that, as I say, were in the friendship circle at the time. They knew Ricky and Gary personally, they were friends of his. They bring a great light to the feel at the time. Um, I would have been growing up mid-80s too, and perhaps a little bit younger than the guys here, but I could relate a lot to the actual music, to the feeling at the time of it being, shouldn't be listening to this, it's evil, it's gonna make you worship Satan. Now these young guys actually were all quite troubled. Um, they were taking soft drugs, which did progress onto harder ones. As I say, again, I don't want to go into the full story, but we do get a picture on how different influences in Ricky Castle's life brought him to the place that he was brought. There were other people also involved. Um, he's very much known as the Acid King and it's concentrated around him as an individual, but there were other people um, very much involved in this murder, which it does go into in great detail. It also gets across that the police very much misreported this in the early days as them all being the member of a satanic cult, which was not true at all. Um, as I say, I won't go into any more detail about that as it is very interesting to listen to. But we speak to a journalist called David Braslin, um, who wrote for Rolling Stone magazine, who actually um, was convinced he had to, something in him said he had to go to Northport, New York and he had to speak to these kids and get to the bottom of what was happening because he wasn't entirely convinced with what was being reported by the police and the whole satanic panic um, sort of like feel at the time. So he was one of the few people that some of these teens actually spoke to and we have audio recording of those interviews from 1984. Um, we He reported properly the mood amongst the kids, what happened. He got to speak to kids that no one else got to speak to. 
and a lot of these interview audio recordings are actually played throughout the documentary which is really interesting but that does bring me to my only one negative about the documentary which is that the older audio files from 1984 are extremely difficult to actually work out what is being said they're very fuzzy because they're old but the voices are a bit distorted you really over concentrate and I find myself rewinding back to try and skipping back to, to try and hear what was being said. If they had have um, put sub subtitles captions over this bit so that you got a clear idea of what was being said, it would make the, the watching the viewing experience much easier. So obviously I can understand them not being very good quality, but it just was quite difficult to hear what was being said when these recordings were being played. That would be my only criticism of the documentary. Um, I loved how it was put together. I loved the different types of people we spoke to. Even though they all came from the same place, they all grew up together, they all hang out together, they all um, broke the law together. These guys have all ended up very different individuals now in adulthood and I found that really interesting. They also have a very different outlook as to when they look back they feel very differently about everything that happened and the culpability of Ricky and you know how much he should be to blame for what happened and how much maybe circumstance was to blame. We also speak to a couple of bands. We have the band Acid Keen who were actually named after Ricky Castle but we also speak to Brandon B. Brown who you probably all know as the lead singer of the band Wheatus who released the song Teenage Dirtbag and that song in itself, he said, was very much influenced by all of the teens at that time, in that town, in that village, and how they all were and how they all behaved. He gave an insight into areas you couldn't go to, the woods that this murder actually happened in. Um, just living there at that time as a teenager, his experience when his mother discovered, you know, heavy metal and the ACDC shirt that was Ricky was wearing when he was arrested and just the fact that none of your parents wanted you to listen to this evil music. So it was really nice to get his viewpoint into it all. So he grew up right in the middle of all of this and he knew these individuals. So that was a really interesting thing to hear about. So as I say, I don't want to go into the ins and outs of it too much to spoil this for you because if you enjoy true crime and documentaries, you will very much enjoy this because it is well put together. It's really interesting. The interviews are really interesting. The people that are spoken to are really diverse. Um, it's an interesting case. There are no horrible bloody pictures or anything like that. I have actually read online that that's a criticism that people wanted to see really hideous, horrible things. But given this is a 17 year old boy at the end of the day, I do feel that, you know, you need to be a little bit warped to want to see this kind of thing. I don't feel it takes away from the documentary whatsoever that we don't have any gratuitous photographs. Everything that I, as a true crime fan and a documentary fan, wanted to know about this case, I felt was answered. I felt I knew. I didn't feel that there was anything not covered. Um, I went away, as I always do in situations like this, and I looked into the case and I read up about what happened. And everything that I found was pretty much covered in this documentary. I don't feel they left anything substantial or important out of the documentary. It is quite lengthy, but I find it flew. I really enjoyed it personally myself. So other than the quality of those few audio recordings and the improvement that could have been made with some captions, I fully recommend this documentary to you. If I had to score this one out of 10, I would come in at an eight out of 10 for this one. So this one's been released soon guys, 5th of November. Let us know below in the comments if you want to see it. If you do watch it, come back and let us know if you enjoyed it below in the comments. We do love to hear your opinions about things that we talk about and we recommend to you. Thank you guys for watching. Over and out.